First, I would like to thank Tree Foundation to organize this event, and uh, <coughs> also thanks, you know, Evelyn and Vincent to you know invite me to this you know, uh, event. And uh, today, like this is an honor to you know to uh, talk about my experience, you know, and uh, in back to the you know, Tibet about teaching the bio uh, like a bi biology in Tibetan language, and. Uh, I know, as I'm, you know, like an educator, in Tibetan, you know, educator, Tibetan language educator, so uh, how important, effective the mother tongue education is for the Tibetan student. My talk today will be focused on my, you know, the bio biology teaching back to the Tibet. Mm. First, let me go over the uh, brief history and practice Tibetan language and uh, science in the uh, education system in Tiara. Uh, before 1950s, there were some public schools run by Tibetan government, which are mainly located in the district country where it mainly taught in traditional way of Tibetan language and uh, simple mathematics. And uh, there were a number of private schools in Hassa city. Monastery were also considered as an educational institute where monks could be yeah. mm -hmm. uh, where, where monks could have an access to the study. And uh, also 1991, um, um, 13th Dalai Lama, when he returned from, from, from India to Tibet, and again, he started to you know, uh, establish or select some youth you know, Tibetan from the you know, noble family to study uh, science. In 1913, uh, he sent the first four Tibetan students to the England to study you know, uh, the military affairs and uh, also mining, also the, you know, the telegraphy and uh, mapping. And uh, these are the first group of you know, the Tibetans who studied you know, the science in the, in the broad. And uh, also, uh, in, uh, uh, and between the, the 1920s and the 1940s, the Tibetan government tried to open a few public schools in central Tibet and adopt modern education models, uh, but these schools were forced to close because of the you know, opposition from the monasteries. So this is you know, before the 1950s. During the, 19, uh, during the 1950, in 1952, the PRC government opened the first primary school in Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, and the first middle school was established in the Lhasa in 1956. Gradually, the PRC government also began to open more schools in the other parts of central Tibet. Although a few science classes were offered in the middle school, they were uh, there were uh, there were no particular textbook for the, you know, these classes. It was mainly created and developed in the Tibetan language by the teachers. And uh, at that time, the Chinese language was taught in these schools, but it was not standardized at all. For example, my parents and uh, also my father-in-law, when they entered to the middle school, they start to learn uh, Chinese. Uh, Chinese language and from the you know, PIN. You know. And between 1959 to the uh, mid 1970s, because of the political situation had changed, Tibet had gone through a major social reform and a 10 years cultural revolution, which almost destroyed the Tibetan culture and religion. The traditional education had demolished totally, and there was not much progress on the public school which PRC government founded. However, Tibetan language maintained its own significance, for example, due to the you know, political needs. At that time, many uh, Chairman Mao's you know, speech uh, was translated into the you know, uh, Tibetan language. And also a lot of you know, political uh, slang you know, the, uh, the slogans. Slogans, sorry. slogans are also you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the widely you know, used in the you know, Tibetan community. So this is you know the in the between 1959 and uh, and 1970s, mm. and 
if we consider that time like you know the, is the best translation of the political terminology you know during that time and uh, after 1980 under Deng Xiaoping's open door policy the education system has basically recovered and made some progress in Tibet but traditional part of the education had little hope in 1987 Mainly the 10th Banqing Rinpoche made an effort to recover some of the traditional education in Tibet, especially on issue of bilingual education and monastic education. It led to central government to come out a new policy which state, stated as an implementing use of the both Tibetan language and Chinese language with a mainly focus on Tibetan language policy. In this policy, it also uh, stated that Tibetan language as a medium, uh, medium language to teach other subjects. Uh, these, uh, just you know, before, like you know, Professor Do he mentioned, these policy was you know changed uh, since you know, after the tenth Ban Qing passed away, 1989, and uh, also the recently like uh, uh, since 2005, also the you know the in in the, this policy also completely changed in TIR. Mm. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this period did not last long as Ben Chi passed away in 1989. And uh, also the, there's a two, two different factors which you know, the Professor Do mentioned before. One is you know, the Ben Chi Lama passed away you know, in, 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 in Tibet. And the second one is because the Soviet Union's collapsed. And then two you know, like, uh, factors, like uh, internal factor and external factors. Those makes you know, the, those policies changed. So later in, uh, uh, in, later in my talk, I will go over more detail of the practice of Tibetan language as a medium language to teach biology around that period. Currently, although the education system seems more standard and uh, it has seems uh, it has some major problem in terms of not using Tibetan language as a medium language and the Tibetan language taught only as a subject in TIL. Uh, 